Hey everybody, welcome back. What you're looking at is a half hide of Channel Leather Canyon Rose Extra Heavy Hot Stuffed Harness Leather from Weaver. I'm reading that right off the website so I don't get it wrong, but I'm sure I misspoke. And the link will be in the description. You can go directly to it. It's about a quarter inch thick. It's 15 ounces. That's what I checked with my gauge. You can see there it's, a, it's about a quarter inch. I work this like I work a sheet of wood. This is like quarter inch wood. And I'm making a six pack holder. Around the same time that Weaver asked me to do a video with this thick leather just to see what I could do with it, Andrew Alexander, my friend at Blacksmith Tools, was at a Christmas party and somebody had a six pack holder that was holding six bottles of liquor. And so he says he asked me, he challenged me around the same time. I said, this might be the perfect leather to make one of those type of carry cases. And that's what I'm doing here. The leather is so thick that I knew I was going to have a hard time sewing corners together. So I tried to limit the amount of sewing that I needed to do. And I came up with this idea to put two seams down each short side. And with the stitching fork, I'm making holes big enough to push a needle through on this heavy, heavy, heavy material. And hand stitching this material is like murder on my hands. And I use PVA glue to glue the joint together. And now here I am the next day hand stitching it with the crisscross stitch on the, on the exposed side. And you do a saddle stitch, you go over and back and forth and through and over and back and forth and through. And I have to pull the needle through quite a bit with a pair of pliers. And you'll notice it was so cold in my shop that my hands were cracking from the cold. So I started wearing rubber gloves from Golden Protective Services. And there you see I'm hammering the thread into the leather. I, I always like doing that. It seems to flatten the threads out, makes it look better and feel better. So I just tend to hammer the threads in there, that's what I do. Now I hand stitch one side, now I have to hand stitch the other, and now I gotta glue that joint tangent to, to itself. First I gotta make sure it's square. I did cut it with the razor blade, so it has a little bit of a bevel to it. So with a hand plane, I make those two surfaces somewhat 90 to 90, and I glue them together. And you see how I use the cantilevered material off the table quite a bit and that really helps work in a big box or big shape like this and this is what I was starting to talk about how cold it was I put on these rubber gloves they're probably uh, like PVA or vinyl gloves I forget exactly what the makeup of them is but the long story is they give me great grip on the hand stitching so if you're going to do some hand stitching, put on rubber gloves because those rubber gloves will give you a tremendous amount of grip. <clears throat> In fact, I didn't need to use the pliers nearly as much by just using those rubber gloves. Now, I'm putting a solid wooden bottom. It was an inch thick. I took it down to about three quarters just because it seemed a little excessive. And a lot of times I do leather work and I solve a lot of problems by putting a wooden side or a wooden bottom. And in this case, it's going to be carrying all these bottles of wine, which could ultimately probably weigh, I don't know, 30 pounds. And you notice I cut a lot of this material right on the table saw. Now this is going to be the dividers. I wanted a wooden bottom so that I wouldn't be struggling with trying to make a strong bottom out of leather. I said, let me just go straight to a piece of wood. Now these are the dividers made up out of the same leather. And you see how I interlace them? By interlacing them, they were going to be supported down the broad center of each one of them the middle between the top extreme and the bottom extreme but I needed something to keep all the the top open holes secured and together and so here I'm going to a thinner veg tan and this might be maybe this is like a five ounce veg tan and I'm gluing these corner braces in and I was inspired to do this because Andrew saw this one at a Christmas party and he sent me pictures of it and it's old and it was falling apart and so somebody used corner braces that you would get from a hardware store to keep those panels in place. I said let me just exploit that concept with a different colored leather. Now I'm using these saddle rivets. They're copper rivets with a 
collar that goes down and you set the collar with that tool and then you snip them as short as you need to and then you ball the end with the other part of the tool and I always glue everything first before I attach it that's just what works for me and here you see those rivets in action you drop the collar down with that tool it has a long hole in one side and then it has a ball tap on the other and having that big giant three by three inch piece of steel that I got as a drop from the sawmill steel mill I use it as this long cantilevered anvil on the table I got copper coated little headed nails from Home Depot and I'm nailing them one inch apart all the way around the bottom to keep the bottom from falling out I did glue it but you can never trust glue alone you gotta ask yourself or at least I picture this sitting in a thrift shop in 90 years from now what joint will fall apart what piece might fall off what will be missing when it's on antiques roadshow when they're on a spaceship hopefully none of the pieces that's why I, I used rivets like crazy now this is where package design experience is important I'm trying to figure out how the top is going to go down and I'm going to bend it and like when you bend metal you have to do the calculations to know what amount of material you're going to lose when you make the bend and that's why that piece of plywood right there that I'm using in and out represents the top of that box so this way I know for certain that when I make my folds if that piece of plywood fits loosely in there it's going to fit loosely on the box so that's why I have that just so I could make sure that the bends I make will be tight enough to securely hold that piece of plywood and I don't have to keep going up to the box on and off and on and off it represents it it's right there down at the table level now when I skived the original corners on the broad box you'll notice I did it by hand with the Dremel tool now here it occurred to me let me just dado them and that's what I'm doing I'm using the line that's right down the middle of the table saw sled as my guide so I know where the blades gonna cut and the blades only cutting up a little bit past halfway and I remove all the material I need to and then with a skiving knife I thin out those flaps those flaps are gonna bend back around and get riveted to the adjacent side that's a skiving knife you can get out weaver and when it goes dull which it does often because I use it a lot I take it right to the buffing wheel and it brings the the edge right back with a lot of rouge on the buffing wheel and now here on that broad piece which is going to become the hinge for the back it was a little inconsistent so I went and I grabbed Tony's hand plane from Hillview Wood and Metal and I was able to use the wood plane just like I was working on wood and smooth out all those joints and here I bend the joint completely all the way back and I hand plane inside the joint and then I close it again and then it's able to be a little bit more relieved so it's not tending to want to pop back open and I noticed I probably had too much of a tab there so if I'm gonna put two rivets in there I'm just gonna make it a little thinner and now again with the steel weights they come in very handy I like having these steel weights everywhere and I just set this up for the night and there I clamp the flaps in place with glue and everything sitting overnight and the next clip is the next morning which happens to be this morning and there I've checked it several times off camera I know it's gonna fit good and now I'm putting those rivets and the rivets gonna give you the peen side sticking out on one side and a flathead on the other and I stick the peen side sticking out in this whole entire configuration mainly because I didn't want partly because I couldn't get at the side and in, inside of the the construction and the other part is I don't want the peened overhead to scratch the the main box and there I'm using a torch just to burn away any of the fuzz that's developed while you do the leather work and I'm gonna glue that flap down and I waited to put the rivets on that side now that the glue's dried, I'm using a 
drill bit, this really long drill bit, to drill all my holes for the rivets that went through everything, including the back flap. So that's why it obviously pays to think ahead and anticipate what's going to happen. And now I'm just trying to work out the concept for the buckle in coordination with the straps. Just getting a feel for what it might look like, just doing a simple little sketch. Now that I de developed a direction, I'm just cutting some more of this same veg tan that I used on the corner braces. And now I'm making part of the buckle. Weaver sells these brass buckles in all sizes. And that was a little trick I developed to skive over my mallet. It raised up where I needed to skive. It made it thinner and easier to get at. And wherever there's veg tan, I'm using brass rivets. So wherever there's that rose colored leather, I'm using copper rivets. Just a small detail, just trying to keep a consistent story. And now this is the top part of the buckle closure system. And I'm just going bananas here, cutting this all out. I'm so used to using the laser cutter these days, I design it in Illustrator and I make a perfect rendition of it. But in this case, I'm hand cutting and shaping everything with the tools. Just not something I'm used to. Now, Quick Print sent me this hot stamp machine and you put your aluminum hot stamp in the machine. Heat is transferred to it ultimately over time. It gets, has to warm up like a toaster oven. And then when your hot stamp head is hot, you're able to transfer this hot foil, the stamped foil to your leather in whatever shape the hot head is. And now I, that was a test and now I'm ready to hot stamp the top of my buckle strap and now I'm hot stamped and branded and I'm ready to go. Thank you Quick Print. I'll be using this machine more often in upcoming leather videos. And now I'm gluing down the top of my belt strap and the bottom of my belt strap and I'm going to wrap it up and under so it looks like it goes under and around the whole machine, the whole box. And there I'm just putting a couple of those nails in it. Gluing helps then later drilling and popping the rivet in. Same thing, I'm doing these rivets sideways now because with the box and everything attached to it, it becomes more and more cumbersome. And by just having that steel weight on the opposite side of the rivet, that's really the only way to do it. And now I need long belting for the handles, and the only way for me to make long belting in my shop is to use my track saw. It's a little unconventional for leather work to do all these woodworking techniques, but it works for me. If it works, it ain't stupid. That's what I was told. Now that leather is a little thick, so I'm going to have to split it with my Weaver splitting machine. And what that does is it takes off two ounces of material at a time. And ounces, by the way, is, is just a unit of measurement in the category of leather. It could be millimeters, it could be inches, but in the case of leather, it's called ounces. And so that veg tan went from about eight ounces down to about five ounces. And it's a good thing because I'm able to roll it and stitch it to make these more grippable handles. So I'm rolling and stitching just in the middle 20 inches. And then when I attach it to the carrying case, the flat strips go against the box and up and under. And these hang in space for you to grab. And I'm just using, using the Weaver 205. There you could see the configuration. And in another world, in another time and place, it would be nice to have stitching down both sides of those belts. but. At this point, I should have planned ahead. So I'm just going to pop rivet them in place, nail them to the wood, and then put the brass collar rivets right there. And there I am just setting them. I do the, the front first, and then I'll do the back. And I find the brass is a little bit sturdier, a little bit stronger, a little bit harder to snip than the copper. And that might make sense overall. And now here we are on the back. I'm gluing the back in place. Uh, the glue that I'm using most often that you see is PVA, book binding or jade glue. I personally like it. I think it's a little bit cleaner to use than the barge glue. 
I find I get barge glue everywhere because it leaves strings and it's just very uncontrollable. I know some leather workers only use barge glue because that's what they were taught to use. There's a few leather traditions which I personally don't love, like the head knife. I don't understand how that people use that head knife. I think people use it because they think it looks more traditional than a razor blade. But I can't get used to it. So here we're basically done. Construction is done. I couldn't go back in off camera and finish all the edges with edge coat, but I'm probably not going to do that. Andrew has seen it. He loves it. And if you're going to ask me how much I'm going to charge him, I think we're just going to trade. I'm just going to trade some tools. So I'll give him the box. He'll give me a tool of some sort. And now I just went and got some cheap wine just to see and feel how this thing would work. And I made a little collar so the handles stay together. I did a little snap collar out of a piece of the scrap veg tan strapping. It has gold snaps on it. And there it was just hanging behind it, so I'm just snapping it together right now. And so now if you're going to be traveling to a Christmas party or whatnot, and you have the handles that you're ready. And there it is. I'm very happy with the final results. A couple things I would change if I was going to do it again. I changed the order of operations so that I know I could sew some things and not only rivet them. But that's a big part of engineering a box like this is the order of operations. And the rivets alone don't bother me. I know it's going to certainly be strong enough. But I would have liked to have seen some stitching on the external parts of this outside of just the hand stitching, some of the machine stitching. But I'm not complaining. It's done and it looks good. I'm, I'm happy. It, it actually is a handsome box. Thank you for watching and thank you, Weaver. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you guys, the fans. And I've started doing more exclusive videos now on my Patreon. I'm going to start doing about one video a month that only appears on my Patreon. The link to my Patreon will be in the description. And there's a new video up on my Patreon now that will only appear on my Patreon. It's the first one of several I'm going to be posting. So go take a look. Thank you all very much.